watershed of the God kind. I would like to welcome you online as many who have decided to join us tonight to be partaker of this blessing. As we are partaker of the nature of God, we are sharer of the nature of God. I'd like to welcome us to Watchmen Fellowship Center, a place by God, a place of rest, a place of encounter, a place of intimacy, God's lighthouse. Watchmen Fellowship Center, manifesting the life of God. We are all welcome tonight with the presence of God and into his presence. I'd like to read from Psalms 100 before we go into prayer. A psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving, and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. I read verse 5 again. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. Let us begin to appreciate the Lord. Let us begin to thank him. We cannot count all that he has done. We cannot count our blessings. But by the time we begin to look one by one and begin to point to this and that that he has done for us, we will realize that indeed the Lord has been wonderful. He has been marvelous. He has been glorious. So, Father, we lift up our praise this evening to you. We lift up our thanks this evening to you. We lift up our appreciation this evening to you. We say you are God. Indeed, you are good. You are not a man that should lie. Neither the son of man that should repent from his word. You are God and you are faithful to your word. You are the promise keeper. You are the one that is fruitful. You are the one that is trustworthy. You are the one that is reliable. You are the one that is dependable dependable god we give you praise everlasting father we adore your name king of glory we exalt you we adore you we bless you we thank you you are our fortress you are our pillar of strength our pillar of hope our pillar of support in you we are rest assured in you we are rest assured in you we can see the future in you we can bank in in you we can rely on in you we can depend on because you never fail you never change you never disappoint. You have never let us down. Father, we say to you be all the praise. To you be all the glory. To the invisible, immortal, only wise God, only true God. Be all the praise. Be all the thanks. Be all the adoration. Be all the worship. But now and forever, we worship your name. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We say praise is due to you. Praise is due to you. Praise is due to you. We ascribe all the praise. We ascribe all the glory. We ascribe all the thanks. We ascribe all the adoration to your holy name. We say receive our praise. Receive our thanks. Blessed be your name from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your name. Ancient of days. Blessed be your name. Almighty Father, we worship your name. We adore your name. For there is no one like you. There is no one like you, Father. There is no one like Thank you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Yahweh. Sambele de de bosi ba yela, samba yela ba, samba yela ba, samba yela ba, da 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 ya da 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 ya da 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 ba ya da ba da ba. Eli ba samba da na yela ba si ba yela ba ye, ayele bosi ba yela ba. Every other cause, all other cause, they are the works of man. You are the only living God. You are the only true God. There is none before you. There is none beside you. There is none ever whatsoever. You are God and you are God alone. You are the Almighty. You are the Almighty. The everlasting Father. The blessed 
our Redeemer, ancient of days. We give you praise, Shebelebo. We give you praise, Shabayela. We give you praise, Simaleba. Simaleba, ba, la maeleba, la lebia taela, ba ye taela, ba ye. Embreke yelebo, Shabayela. Embreke yela, ba yela. Ika yela, ba sama, da 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 ba ya. Embreke yela, ba re Shabaya. Yela ba sama, da 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 ba. We worship your name. We exalt your name. We exalt your name. We magnify you. We we'll say there is no one like you. Indeed, you are God. You are from everlasting to everlasting. You are the greatest. You are the powerful, the most high, the all-sufficient, the self-existent, the self-sufficient, the Almighty, the everlasting Father, the one who was with and is to come. Father, we give you praise. We say be glorified. Be glorified tonight. Be glorified tonight. Be glorify and the 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 bobo sidaba a sega de bosi gayela a sigla tayela bosa bayela ba a sama yente libra salia a tali gatu bara sagaroba we thank you for the day one of the world conference we thank you for the day two we thank you for what you have done we thank you for tonight for what you are about to do in our midst. Father, we say thank you. It can only get better. It can only get better. It can only get better. It can only get more glorious. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Ba 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 saba, saga ta ga ta rapas kapa, yipaka 
posca paye paye lipa cobra paye paye em brava sua braca sua paye la pacusa paya la pacastaba e brava sua pacuasete e pecate cobra scape la brava cuasate ma cobra case a bracasia a bragato a pelecati carapacato a pelecati caraperodo e a pacustia braco ma cromba sopia cate o sopia cati bracate e parebia cati base Abraka sobia taya, ibraka sakaye, sakataya, sakataya, akata, rakata kaposka pe, zapropa kelia pake, zaprapako, maropa pelia paropa gaya, ombra paeli pareba boba saba, resha bali saka posta pa, ibraba sopili pare, la pescubia stariaga, astabilia kaya, estabilia kaya, estrakatista, ibrakateska pelia stero. Tonight we go forth higher. We come up either. We come up either in our knowledge of God, in our nature of God. We come forth either. We come forth higher. We go forth higher. We come up either. I am in a knowledge of God. I am in a understanding of God. I am, I am, I am. We go for I am. We come for I am. By your understanding, by your wisdom, by your power, by your teaching, my Holy Ghost. We come up I am. We go up I am. We go up I am. In the name of Jesus. Ayeli kasobra kayela bosaba. Iprebele bosa bregedo le popo poro poko toboko. We advance. We advance, we advance, we advance in our knowledge of God. We advance in our revelation and understanding of things of God. Tonight we move up higher. We move up higher in the name of Jesus. By the help of the Holy Ghost, by the teaching of the Word tonight, we move up higher. We come up higher in the name of Jesus. We will never remain the same again. We will never remain the same again. Akai la katuba saba. Ibra ba ye la katuba yega. Ibra kete rekete ye te rekete kete repokoto. Repos kapoli akato. Makombri asakiata. Ekati gastaba. Sagata ya raba ya rabo. Sagata raba ya rabo. Ibra kaya lipa sobra kaya. Ele bo 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 bo. Rapa pa pisa pa skape. Ya pa pa skipa skape. Ya pa pa skipa la skape. Askipa la skape. Biascaro, Esquibala Sabiagado, Embra Pai Labo, Embra Pai Labo, Embra Pai Labo, Embra Pai Labo, Rabba Baba Bayela Barra Bayela Barra Dayela Gadera Gadegado, we receive. Ayi la kusa chali braka sobra te le kete kusta pe li poko po yi paka so ya braka swa braka ya ati grata kuasa imbrasta kelia imbrasta kelio eske robo si abalosa aperi ya karoba ye imbraba sombra kaya karuba saba ye sa karibia ta ya imbrata ta ya ta gata rapa gata ya para rapa gata para rapa gato ya para rapa Kata barabado, ibo sobro kopo, ibra sobra kato, ibra bo sabra godo, robo stepiye kati obro kato, amperia baro baya, oparia baya, oparia baya, elaga raga da laga da raga da bosha. We receive wisdom, we receive wisdom by the word. We zumba the war, and the levels are there. In Belarus, in Bahrain, in Paris, in Istanbul, in Prague, in Istanbul, in Tokyo, in Prague, in Istanbul, in Prague, in Istanbul, in Tokyo, in Prague, in Istanbul, in Tokyo, in Istanbul, in Tokyo, in Prague, in Istanbul, in Riba baba shabari kata ya toba sara asaki liba sabi ni asaria embra kasu brata ya la ba ya mighty holy ghost we are there to teach us tonight we are there to minister upon your word tonight we are there to breathe upon your word afresh tonight we are that let your word sink deep into our spirit we are that let your word speak and live and deliver life to every heart and to every life. 
In the name of Jesus, Gralebo Shibra Koyate, Makoria Sebiate, Empre Kesubra Taligado, Atakiria Pariado. We thank you for yet another successful World Conference. We thank you for the final night. We thank you for the amazing and wonderful things you are going to do. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise, Shaleba Sebayel, for the explosion of your world tonight. For the explosion of your word tonight, we thank you, we thank you, because we will never remain the same again. I will never remain the same again. Your brother of Rabba said the brack is a fraba de Eba. Mambreke de Black is of Ragila Bragas of Robo said the Laba. Mambreke de Breketilla Bragas of Rodibe. Mendo Robo Chef Regedi Blackas of Rodo. Mida Basso de Braca de la Bassa. Mambreke de 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 Rabado. Mambre de la Barabada de Do. 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 Eye Breke de la Brede de Brede de la Barabada de Do. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Precious Holy Spirit, we welcome you tonight. We thank you for your word that is changing us from glory to glory. We just want to thank you for the power of your word, for the truth of your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word that is made manifest in this place. Our eyes are open to see the jewels in the word of God, and we are changed and transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ, that we have prayed. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Help me ask somebody, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling? Are you good? Or are you cold? Which one is it? You are all praying for the, for, the, for the sun. The sun has come. You are in jacket now. You were looking for the sun. The sun has come, but you are in jacket. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. amen. Right, let's have our seat and let's get into the word the bible says we took sweet counsel together and went into the house of the lord now yesterday please i don't want distractions children i want you seated and i don't want you talking all right i don't want any talking from the children if you're writing as a child you're writing focus on your writing okay who can remind me what we talked about yesterday if we are going to fully express um our what we we're talking about being associates of the god kind we are partners see associate means partners with god not just that we are associate means a partner with god not just a sharer in god we are partners with him we are his associates what a privilege that god should call me a partner <laughs> Do you know how lofty that is? See, there's a way I have to carry myself. You know, if you were a partner with some people in business and you mentioned their name, they will say, Ah, oh, you're a partner with who? And you mentioned the name. Wow. All of a sudden, the way you assess them changes. The way you look at them changes. Everything about how you look at that person changes. Why? Because now you know who they are in partnership with. All of a sudden, you know, you can't mess around this person. If you were somebody who were planning to attack them, the moment that you realize who they are in partnership with, everything changes. You say, Ooh, you got to be careful. So, we say that we are partners with God, associates of the God kind. We have received eternal life. However, in order for us to manifest all that God plans for us to be, in order for us to respond properly as associates of the God kind, I said one thing that yesterday with us that is important that all believers must experience what did i call it 
death. What type of death is it? Dying to self. Now, what did the Bible say? The Bible says that your flesh has been crucified. Let me give you a scripture. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 22. Four twenty seven to about twenty nine. Ephesians four, twenty seven to twenty nine. Let's read that. And I want us to read this together. All right. Want to go? Let's read. Yeah. Next one. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. Let, let, let's stop at 28. The Bible says in Galatians 5, 24, it said that they that are Christ, they that are Christ, they that are Christ, they that belong to God, they that belong to Christ, the Bible said they have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. So I said yesterday that we have to accept that we have died. That was the main point. In order for this life of God, in order for us to respond accurately as associates of, God, of the God kind, as partners indeed with God, accept this death. And the only way you would accept it is if, I'm coming back to this scripture in a minute, is if we obey what is in, if we do what is in, you see, sometimes we, we interchange between obedience and doing because the people in the Old Testament were told to obey. Why? They didn't have the God life to do it. But now we have his life to do what God says. Glory to God. Now, look at what it says in um, Romans 8 verse 13. Now, I said we have to accept it. Now, verse 8, 13. Romans 8, 13 says, For if ye live after the flesh, you shall die. Do you see? If you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye, through the spirit. Now, I need to explain something about if you live after the flesh. Because in Romans 8, verse 1, it says, Who walk not after the flesh. But now in Romans 8, 13, it says, If you live after the flesh, you shall die. Now, the Bible says, live in the spirit. It says we are in the spirit. It says that our life is in the spirit. If our life is in the spirit, what does that mean? And I explained to us when we were talking about this a couple of months ago that Living in the spirit means that, um, because that spirit actually says for us to walk in the spirit. But it says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Come on, say, I live in the spirit. I live in the spirit. So to live in the spirit means that to, that's where you were born. Anyway, you were born into the spirit. Now, if it says, if our life is in the spirit, meaning this is what God's word says concerning you. This is what God says you are. This is who God says you are. This is what God says you are. This is who God says you are. You accept it. That is living in the spirit. That thing that God says you are, when you begin to do it, you are now walking in the spirit. But it says here in Romans 8.13, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Living after the flesh is accepting what the flesh says you are. Not what God's word says you are. When you accept what the flesh says that you are. If the flesh says, oh, we are going to smoke today and you accept it. Guess what? It says you will die. If the flesh says we are going to steal, it says you will die. What does that mean? There is a life in the spirit. There is a life in the flesh. God says this is who you are in the spirit. The flesh says this is what I want you to be. It doesn't say if you walk after the flesh, you shall die. If you live after the flesh. If you live after the flesh. It starts with accepting what the flesh says you are. You know the flesh talks to you and tells you, 
this is what you are going to do today. You are not going to go today. You are not going to do this today. You are not going to do that today. When the flesh tells you that, he said, if you live, if you accept what that flesh says, he says you will die. Now, he said, if you through the spirit mortify the deeds of the body. Now, how do we accept that we that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts? Because, watch this now. Because we have to talk about the practicality of it. He says, accept it. How will you accept it? You will yield to the spirit. Because you have to allow the spirit to mortify the flesh. You have to allow the Holy Ghost to mortify your members. The Holy Spirit is the one that can help you to die to the flesh. Say somebody can be cursing, cursing you out. Listen, you have mouth for a reason. And your mouth, you can also use it to curse. But if you live after the flesh, you shall die. You shall die. Meaning for you, there is no profit in the flesh. Jesus said in John 6, 63, he says, it is the spirit that quickens, that gives life. The flesh has no profit. The word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Look at the way Apostle Paul puts it there. The word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus is saying this. But he says, if we through the spirit mortify the deeds of the body, if you through the spirit mortify the deeds of the body, you will live. Come on, say, I live because Jesus lives. So the first thing we need is to express. To ex Come on, say, I'm going to express. I will express. Listen, as a partner of God, for you to express, the number one thing you need is to accept that you have actually died. And if you are going to accept that, you are going to yield to the word of God. You are going to, you're going to do the word and you are going to yield to the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost says this, you yield to the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, you follow the inclinations of the spirit. You follow the promptings of the spirit. To follow the promptings of the spirit is not difficult. Practice with the word of God. Practice with the word of God. God says to be in the house of God. You respond, you go. It will be easy for the Holy Spirit to lead you. If the Holy Ghost says, ah, uh, now I want you to do this, you will not be able to hear. Why? Because when he told you the last time to go and fellowship with God's people, you say, ah, uh, today I'm tired. Now, it will be difficult for you to experience the leading of the Spirit. You will struggle. Why? Because you are choosing what you want to do. You see? So, if you want the Holy Ghost to lead you, practice, if you want to experience that death that is saying, if you through the simplified disease of the body, look at simple instructions from the word of God. Where the word of God is clear and revealed, follow the, those instructions. God asks you to give somebody something. Ah, well, I'm not. When you, it will be easy for you to do that if you begin gradually following the word of God. If you have not learned this, just responding to what the word of God says, it will be difficult to do what I'm saying to you. God can ask you to give 1,000 pounds to somebody. When you cannot follow, when the Spirit said to you, that feeling of saying you are tired, I don't want to hear it, you need to be in church. If you cannot respond to that simple one, listen to me. Let angels be crying in your room. You will not give a 1,000 pounds. It will never happen. In fact, what is a 1,000 pounds? 100, you will not give it. You know why? You have not obeyed the simple one. You will not obey any voice. Okay? Now, number two thing that we need to do is that in order for us to express as God part, God's partners, live conscious of this truth. It says you are born again, not of, not of corruptible, but of incorruptible, by the word of God that lives and abides forevermore. God says you are born again. Don't try to accept what the flesh is telling you. You are born again. Ah, well, they said that everybody in my family is cursed. The Bible says you are not cursed. Accept that truth. Ah, well, they said to me that this thing is going to keep happening in my life. No, you can, ask, you can change it. You can change it. Why? The word of God is telling you that you can do it. Come on, say, I can do it. Let this thinking run your life. 
when this thing can run your life, it will not make you to become lasadesica or you, you, you start becoming careless and say, oh, now, you know, I have this. It, it, listen to me. I don't know how some people do it, but it's, I, I cannot do that because I have this intimate relationship with God. Now I'm just careless. You know, what did you say there? Oh, we can have time. For, you have time for everything because you are so intimate with God. Oh, you know, I just, I just have this intimacy with God. There's no discipline for anything. No. It is that partnership that will sponsor your discipline. You can't go everywhere because you're a partner with God. You can't go everywhere. You can't have time for everything. And you cannot have time for everyone. There are certain things I have time for. Nothing else. Yes, because I'm a partner with God. I'm a partner with God. There are things I have time for and there are things I will never have time for. So I'm saying to you today, in the same way, let this thinking run your life. Let the thinking that I'm a partner with God, look at how big that is. Can a partner with God fail? No. Can a partner with God live and be dominated by sin and sickness? No. So you accept that truth. You let that thinking run your life. I'm a partner with God. I'm a partner with God. If this thinking runs your life, let me give you some things that will be indicative that you are now walking as a partner with God. If you are walking conscious, so the point is live conscious of this truth. If you are living conscious of this truth, one of the things you are going to find is that you are going to give time to things that will promote eternal life in you. You will give time to things that promote eternal life. Things that will promote the life of God, you will give time to it. Help me ask a neighbor next to you. Say, how much time did you give to the word of God today? Mm-hmm. Any answers? Tell them to answer you. Answer me. If you don't want to say it loud, loud, say it in my ears. <laughs> say to your neighbor, how much time did you give to prayer today? Kneel or half an hour or one hour or six hours. Ask your neighbor, why did you not do six hours? Why not? After all, school is off now. And even if school is not off, I've been up in home since. Listen, you will give time to things that encourage this life. You will give, ti- you will give time to it. Things that will promote this life, you will give time to it. Listen, you cannot live successfully conscious of this truth if you do not regularly stay of the power of God in you. That's on that thing you're going to do. Under living on the conscious of this truth, you will stay up the power of God in you by praying in the Spirit. 2 Timothy 1 6 to 7. You will stay up the power of God in you by praying in the Spirit constantly. 2 Timothy 1 6 to 7. He said, I put you in remembrance. That thou stay, wherefore I put in remember that thou stay of the gift of God, which is indeed by the putting on of my hands. Verse 7. Verse 7. Let's read verse 7. One to go. I can't hear you. Let's read. Yes. For God has not given the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Power, love, sound mind. Now, here's what you have to understand. You don't have the spirit of fear. But you have the spirit of love. It means you can love. You have the spirit of power. You can walk in the power of God. And you have what? Sound mind. But how are you going to steer it up? Because fear can be operating around your life. You can find fear around your life. What do you do? Verse 6, stay of the power of God. 
How do you stir up the power of God? By praying in the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive the gift of, the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues is not the presence of power. It is the Holy Ghost that is the presence of power in your life. When the Holy Ghost came, he said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost, not after you receive tongues. After the Holy Ghost comes. Holy Ghost gifts you with tongues. What is the tongue for? Power is proof that the Holy Ghost is in my life. That's proof that the Holy Ghost is in my life, not tongues. Power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come. And how will you know that I have received power? I'll be able to do things that I couldn't do before. Well, one of them is that you are going to be what? A witness. I'm going to get there in a minute. So, you stay up the power of God. You stir it up. Listen, you have the capacity to live above fear. But until you stay up the power of God, fear can overwhelm you. You have the ability to walk in dominion over sin, over sickness. But until you stay up the power of God, it can bind you. Things can be happening and it will seem like, I don't think I can help you. You can help it. Stay up the power of God. That's what the Bible says. He said, Timothy, Timothy, here's what you're going to need to do. Stay up the power of God. Carasa. All of a sudden, you find boldness. Why? You have stirred up the power of God. All of a sudden, you find courage. What has happened? You have stirred up the power of God. When you stir up the power of God, what happens? Love begins to flow in your heart. Sound mind is there. And then power. You have ability to do work. You have ability to do the things you couldn't do before. The life of God comes alive in you. So you stay, you stay out of the power of God. Another thing you're going to do is that you become addicted to God's word. If you're going to live conscious of this, you stay out of the power of God. You give time to things that will promote your life, this life. You, pro, you give time to things that will, that will promote this life. By staring up the power of God, by becoming addicted to God's word, you are a product of the word of God. Being born again, 1 Peter 2, 20, uh, sorry, 1 23, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God that lives and abides forevermore. 1, 1 Timothy 2, 2 says, Desire the sincere make of the word of God as a newborn babe. Glory to God. 1 Timothy 4, verse 13 says, Give attendance to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. Give attendance to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. 4.13. You give attention to it. Listen actively to our sermons. Listen. Say to somebody, listen actively. Listen. You listen to it. This message we are preaching, go back and listen to them. Okay, I'm an asset of the God kind. Listen at them over and over. Medi See, how do you become addicted to the word of God? Everything you want to get God's thoughts on it. You want to make it what, what is God saying? You get in His Word. Listen to the sermons. Meditate on the Word of God when you read. You read the sermon. Look at this one. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. So you read that. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. You you meditate that. You meditate that. You meditate that over and over and over until it becomes part of you. Give time to it. Pray the word. This, pray it. You find the scripture. The Lord shall increase your greatness and comfort you in every side. I did that in Psalm 71 verse 21. You pray that word. The Lord shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. And comfort me on every side. You pray it. You declare it. You meditate it. You pray that word. Oh, the word of God declare this. And you speak and pray it. I'm an outset of the God kind. You start praying it. I'm an associate of the God kind. I'm an associate of the God kind. Zaboko Tobo, in the name of Jesus. You begin to pray that. Listen, you will not forget it because it's now part in you. You are bringing it into your mind. You are making your mind conscious of it. And wrong thoughts are being deleted as you are doing that. You are exchanging wrong thoughts for the word of God. So that's how you renew your mind. You bring the word of God. You bring it in. You meditate it. You say it to yourself. You say it over and over and over. And as you do that, it begins to eject some stuff in your life. Before you know, you can't. some stuff you used to say before, you can't say them anymore. Not because you don't want to say it, but because they are not in you. They, just, they are not there anymore. You don't have those words. 
You don't have vocabulary that can curse. You don't have it. You cannot. Why? You have, you have, you have the word in you now. What are you going to do again? Is that you are going to preach the word. If you are going to live conscious of this truth, you will give time to the things that will promote this life in you, eternal life. What makes you an asset of the God kind is eternal life. You give time to the things that will promote eternal life in you. The things that will help you to express as an associate of the God kind. You stir up the power of God. Whenever you see fear coming, it's time to stir up the power of God. Whenever you see anxiety coming, it's time to stir the power of God. Whenever you see worry trying to overwhelm you, it is time to stir up the power of God. Whenever you are getting lost, it's coming now. Lossful thoughts are coming. It is time to stir up the power of God. Now, is fear come? Stir up the power of God. Karabo Sokoto. Now, it's not just that. All of this you can be doing at the same time. While you are paraso, kebledi, start speaking the word of God. Start speaking it. It is written. Start speaking it. It is written. It is written. It is written. The word of God declares, I am the head, I'm not the tail. You have just received, I am the head, I'm not the tail. As you begin to speak, see, you cannot operate like this and not speak in tongues. Whilst you are speaking the word, just keep speaking the word. You just be going in between speaking the word, preaching in, and praying in tongues. Zapra go sopra go do. And when you do this, you also preach the word. Second Timothy 4 verse 2 says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Rebuke, reprove with all authority. Be instant in season and out of season. You see, a time is coming, Second Peter, uh, sorry, Second Timothy 4 verse 2, a time is coming when people will, not, will, will no longer endure our doctrine. Mm. For the time will come when when, um, verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own loss shall they eat to themselves what teachers having itching ears. Glory to God. But verse 2 says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. What does it mean to reprove? What does it mean to reprove? It means to bring correction. Through the word of God. Some people will say some stuff to you when you are out there. And the Bible says when they say those things, bring reproof. You bring correction. No, that's not correct. This is what the word of God says. You're not there to fight anybody, but you, 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 you reproof. You admonish them. You rebuke. Admonish them. I mean, you charge them strongly. You bring a strong word of God. You bring the word of God the way it is. Don't, you don't, you, you're not going to water it down. This is what the word of God says. Anything contrary to it is wrong. You're going to make the word of God clear. It's not that they are trying to figure out whether or not uh, we don't know what side you're on. You will preach it. Christ Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Don't preach Christ in the way where, well, any other, whatever religion you do. No. It has to be clear. The Bible says there is no salvation in any other. Acts 4 verse 12. In any other but Christ. No other salvation. I don't care how close you are to, oh, well, you know, I have, uh, I have friends who are Buddhists. I have friends who are imams. I have friends who are, um, what, what thing else is it? In India, there is one million gods in India. If, this was in the 1982. One million gods <laughs> in India. <laughs> One million gods. 19 what? 82. There was one million gods in India. During COVID, did you know how many things they threw in the, in the water? They said they, they couldn't save them from COVID. They, they threw them away. I don't know what, how many gods they have left. I remember somebody went to India. He had a long bed. This was many years ago. He was a doctor. And then some guy, and they said, so neighbors, they just came and started bowing and doing obeisance. And, and he says, what, 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 he called his friend. He said, ah, he said, you remind, you remind them of their God. When people can have so many gods, they are confused. There's no other way, only Jesus. There's no other way. God doesn't eat anybody. Have you ever heard people say to you, hey, brother, calm down. They've told me that. I was preaching in the bus one time, 
and some fellows from another religion said to me, this, this, and that. I have remained telling the same message. Listen, people have said, so you mean that the way we are in this world, two billion people. You mean that if, if we all don't accept Jesus, that will go to hell? Yes. That's the answer. There's a record in the Bible. Genesis chapter 6, in case you don't know where it is. Show people there. When we talk about this stuff, people think it's a joke. This is why we are passionate about the gospel. When I tell you to preach the gospel, it's not so much. First of all, let me tell you this. When you preach it, it helps you better than the person that you are helping. You may think, ah, when I preach this gospel, no, it is first of all for you when you preach the gospel. It is first of all for you. Even though you set out to help somebody else, but it is helping you more than it's helping them. When you preach, somebody can be saved. When you preach, someone can be encouraged. When you preach, someone's lifestyle can change. But it helps you much more. You know how it helps you? You become more conscious of the life that's in you. You become more conscious of Jesus when you preach. He said, do it when you feel well. Do it when you don't feel well. My sister phoned me uh, months ago. It might have been last year. She wasn't feeling great. She still went for evangelism. She went to do so winning. God never said when you don't feel this and that. Listen. In season, out of season means at all times. Oh, uh, I'm not feeling great today. Preach the gospel. If the door open for you to preach, preach the gospel. Oh, I'm tired. But there's somebody that needs to be saved. Preach. What did Jesus say? He was tired from his journey. He didn't feel like going anywhere. He was tired. And then, guess what? A woman came in John chapter 4. And they went, Jesus, they went to find food for Jesus. He was so tired, he couldn't, he couldn't go with them. They went to the city to find food and brought it back to him at the well. Yet Jesus did not eat. You know what he said? He said, I have made that you know nothing about. He was not, he, he was so tired. Did you know he was so tired he was sleeping in the boat? But this time, as tired as he was, he was so tired. Yet, when an opportunity came for him to preach the gospel, his strength came back. That's what we are like. That's, and that's what we all should be like. You should not be like, ah, Lord, this. No. If there's an opportunity for me to preach the gospel, I don't care what I'm doing. I will preach. I will preach. You should be like that. If, I, if God opens opportunity for me, I don't know where the strength comes from, I, will, I share the gospel. For someone to be born again, for you to keep, for you to make sure somebody escapes the fire of hell, it's worth it. And listen, the Bible says in Proverbs 11, chapter 11, verse 30, he who wins souls is wise. When you preach, it makes you conscious of Jesus. When you preach, it causes your love to burn for Jesus. It makes you live a life of accountability. John 17, 19. There are some things you will not find me doing, even if I wanted to do them. You know why? I, I live a life of accountability. Why? Because I know somebody could be there. Not just because I'm on YouTube or whatever. No. The fact that I have preached, I'm conscious of the life that I live. Now, some people cannot say to their neighbors they are Christians. You know why? Because they are going to lie two days' time. <laughs> and they know. Huh? If a believer can say to his neighbor, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, and this and that, and is not conscious and, the fo- and next day, he can lie and change numbers and all that. He has not known the truth. He has not received the truth. You cannot. Let's read this one to go. John 17, 19. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified to do the truth. Ah, let's read it one more time. For the last time, let's read now. Who was he talking about here? The what? The believers, but he was talking about the disciples because what he said to them, he also said to God. He was talking for, to his disciples who he was praying for at the time. He said, for their sakes, I sanctify myself. What does it mean to sanctify yourself? To separate yourself. To make yourself holy. Ah, because of these people, I will not do that. Ah, I cannot say that. No, I can't say that because of this. 
You being evil, the Bible says you would give good things to your children. You being what? Evil. Some of you here have savings for your children. You have savings. Ah, because some of you here, your daughter is not a particular age. You're thinking of what you buy. Your son is not this. You're already planning for this and that. You can do that. And you think God will do less? Listen, there's a level of accountability you walk in when you begin to preach the gospel. God knows that you cannot run the Christian life successfully without preaching the gospel. I'm telling you, I knew it for a long time. Let me tell you, it is difficult to fall. I know you need the Holy Ghost, yes, but these are the things the Holy Ghost will help you to do. It is difficult to live in sin. If you are a believer, you understand this message, and you also preach. If you don't preach, my brother, sin is at your door. I've witnessed you too many times for you to bring me that idea. They've heard me too many times talking about God in work for them to suggest that to me. They already know it's not going to fly, so they don't bring it. And if for any reason they bring it, just in case at any moment they, have, they forgot, I'll bring it back to their remembrance. Sorry, I don't do that. I cannot. I will not. You see, it makes you live a life of accountability when you preach. Preach the word. Say to your neighbor, preach the word. The Bible says, be instant in season and out of season. Let's look at Ezekiel 3, verse 18. Ezekiel 3, verse 18. Look at what it says. Sometimes we think we have a choice. You cannot know this truth and not preach it. Yes, Sunday coming. Invite people to church. Why? So they can hear the word. Invite somebody. On Facebook. Use your social media for that. Then the people that you're out and about, give them cards. You know, the reason we do those cards principally is so people, Jesus can be known. Because we have preached the message you should preach. We have put it on the cards. And more often than not, someone said to me recently, he said, I have known of giving cards to people, but I have never seen this card that we give. He said, I have never seen anybody throw it away. That was this person's opinion. He said, I've never seen people throw it away. That every time, he said, I've seen people throw stuff away, but I have never seen people throw this thing away. Just imagine how many people. Let's read this one. Let's read this one to go before I go. One to go. Yes. 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 Can you pay that price? Can you pay that price? The price of someone else's blood. Can you pay it? It is more serious than I'm saying it. I'm telling you, I cannot pay for someone else's blood. But if you do not preach, that's what God is telling you. If you don't preach, I will require their blood. Listen, it's easy. Sometimes, whether you are full of the Spirit or you don't full of the Spirit, you can give somebody a card. Whether you say Jesus loves you, whether you say anything on your brother, I want to give you something. Just plant that seed there. We've made it simple. And through that, you can start the conversation. Listen, somebody receives that. Oh, right. It's looking at stuff. Then it sees the prayer at the back. Do you know how many people have read that prayer so many times? Or they will just go, what does it say? The Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today. What is this? What is this? And God can minister to them through that. You don't know how many people will not be able to see on this terrestrial ball who have been blessed by that card that we give them. So I'm saying to you, be active with evangelism. Don't relax. Don't acquiesce. Don't stay and say, well, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to do what is convenient for me. Don't do that. Say to your neighbor, don't do that. Don't do that. Listen, you have to be concerned. You have to be concerned about 
the fact that if you do not talk, someone might go to hell. If you keep your mouth shut, someone might go to hell. Don't be too comfortable to where people are doing all kinds of stuff. You don't care. Matthew 5, verse 4, 13 to 16. Matthew 5, 13 to 16. Let's look at this. Let's read. One to go. Next verse. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill. Next verse. Neither do men light a candle. Yes. Next 16. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. One of the ways of making your light shine is preaching. Salt is useless if it doesn't find its way into the pot. Oh, well, I have salt. Oh, we know we have salt in the house. Do you know how precious salt is? Nothing can, no salt that you have in the house can take its place. And it's not about the quantity of salt you're going to use. Just that there is no sauce in your house that can take its place. Or you have anything in the house, anybody in here that can take the place of salt. You have so many condiments and stuff that you still need. It, listen, it's not so much about the You say, just that, just tiny, weeny bit. I just need to put it in there. That's how important you are. Imagine, it calls you salt of the earth. What does that mean? You preserve the earth from decadence. So every time you preach the gospel, listen, forget about whether, listen, I don't care whether somebody, I'll point them a card. Oh, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want it. That's fine. What day did we go to the center one time, two weeks ago? I can tell you, um, the, all the people take it from me a lot. I hardly get reviews at some time. But this time, it might have been four people that I met that were saying no. But I couldn't be deterred. But you can say, ah, but it's not the day for soul winning today. I kept going. After the fourth person, I went again. She was there. I kept going. I kept going. I kept going. Listen, I know what I am doing. I am saving somebody. Listen, his blood can never be on my head because it was told. I'm not doing it so that, oh, you know why I'm doing it? Because I don't want your blood to be on my head. I'm not doing it from that standpoint, like, Oh, I'm just doing so you don't go to hell. You know, there are people, <laughs> oh, when, if you were, if, if you knew those days when people were preaching born again, a lot of believers had this attitude. Oh, hmm, I just pity you to hell. You are good. <laughs> Not from that perspective. No. We are doing it because we genuinely love people. And we'll never go into our flesh to think, oh, don't you know what I'm trying to help you? No. I know what I am doing. Let's keep praying in it. Pray for souls to be saved. Pray, child of God. Listen, you are not in the place where you cannot preach. And you know one of the reasons we are doing six hours of prayer and three hours of prayer? You know one of the reasons we are doing these things is so that we'll continue to do effectively what we are doing here. So that we can have time to pray for other people and other nations where Satan has not permitted them to have this freedom. We have the freedom to pray. Let us pray. We have the time to pray. Let us pray. So let's remember that. Child of God, let your light so shine. How do you make your light shine? By preaching. Titus 1. Let me read Titus 1. Titus 1, 1 to 3, please. Let's go with that. Zakobosha Gadaba, pray in the tongue, pray in tongues for a minute, pray in tongues. Samado do Boroba Zabra Gadida la Bracazo, Mende Blegezo Brogodiba la Gadu do Boroba Zaka de Bracadia Sodobo. Amen. Let us read this one to go. Yes. yes. Verse 2. Next, verse 3. 
Hold on a minute. How is it manifested? Do you see it? It will only manifest through preaching. What does that tell you? Manifest is what through preaching. So God's work cannot be manifested if you do not preach. Do you see it? The word of God will only be manifested when you preach the gospel. If you are quiet, the word of God will not be manifested. So I enjoy you today. Preach the gospel. Listen. It looks, when you say preach to some people, it looks like it's too formal. Be a witness simply. Acts 1 verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Look at what it says. Acts 1 verse 8. Verse 8. Okay, let's read this one to go. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Yes. And ye shall be witnesses. witnesses. A witness. A witness. Nobody can believe Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Who is a witness? I saw it. We were not there when Jesus died, but because we believe, he has made us a witness. I'm a witness that he died. He was buried. He died, was buried, and rose again. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. God, Listen to me. God never asked you to defend him. Oh, I'm going to defend God. It's not your call. You are only a witness. When they call you as a witness in court to stand, what do you say to the people? Do you say to them, listen, George, I don't know about the ruling you're about to pass, but whatever you do, this man, he must go to jail. No, that's not what they asked you to come to do. They will post to you the question they wanted to answer. Were you there? Did you see this? What did you see? Tell us. Ah, I saw this. I saw this. He asked us to preach the gospel. Acts 28, verse uh, 18 to 20. Uh, sorry, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Matthew 28. Say with me, I'm a witness. Say, I have received power to be a witness. In Jesus' name. Now, let's read this one to go. And Peter came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore on account of this power. Yes, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you, even, even on to the end of the world. Amen. Can you back up to uh, verse 19? Go ye therefore. Someone say, go ye therefore. Go ye therefore. On account of the authority that I have, I say go. That's what he told us. Go. Did he ask you to go and hug you? Yes, I told you about the place of rebuking, reproving, correcting. You are doing that through the word of God that you are sharing. He said, go ye therefore and what? Teach all nations. Teach all nations. What did he say you should do? Teach all nations. I'm a witness. Jesus loves you. Have you been born again? I would like to invite you. A door has opened for you. Whilst you are, oh, I'd like to invite you. And the person gets, oh, where is this? It's at this and that. Brother, by the way, are you a believer? Oh, what does that mean? See, don't ask two questions that, ask questions that can open the conversation. Are you a believer? In what? Yes, that's better. Oh, I believe, what do you mean? I mean, have you known Jesus Christ as your Lord? Uh, well, you know, there was a time I was, I do have open for you to share the gospel. Share it. Share it. I told somebody many years ago, I said, you know, Jesus paid for your sin and blah, blah, blah. Then I said, you know, he died, he went to hell, so you will not go to hell. But anybody who refuses the offer of God's salvation will what? Go to hell. Is the truth. Anybody who refuses the offer, and I left it at that. Why? 
because I'm a witness. I can't make them do it. And this person was taking me somewhere. When we arrived at our destination, and I paid, the brother said to me, brother, please. I, all I said was what I just said. He said, please. That thing you said, I want to know Jesus as Lord of my life. The Holy Ghost is real. When you go, do what he has asked us to do. That's all. I led him to the Lord without struggles. I just was a witness. And mind you, I'm going on praying for that soul that I've just been won into the kingdom. I'll try my best. I wasn't a pastor at the time. I'll try my best to tell them what to do with their faith. Say with me, I'm a witness. In the name of Jesus. Say with me, I will no longer be quiet. I will share about this life. I will share about this life. I will share the word of this life. In the name of Jesus. I will stir up the power of God in me. I'm, an, I'm addicted to God's word. I am a witness. In the name of Jesus. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Okay. Share with somebody what has blessed you so far. Share with your neighbor. Say what has blessed you so far. Share with me. Say what has blessed you so far. Say what have you learned. So what have you learned in these three days. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. I want to declare that what you have learned in these past three days. That you will never lose it. That you will never lose it. That you, lose it. That you, lose it. That you are going to put it to work. That, that, you to to it to work. that the word of God is working in your life. Eternal life is at work in my life. Eternal life is at work in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I increase in strength. God's work, God's word is alive in me. I'm filled with eternal life. In the name of Jesus, I walk in dominion over sin, over Satan, over sickness. By the life of God, I have the God life. 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 I will no longer be bound by the devil. In the name of Jesus, I'm from from this day, I am a witness. I declare that I have the power to witness about Jesus. I will not be quiet. I will not be silent. I will not acquiesce in the name of Jesus. I will not be silent. I will not be silent. I will share the gospel with others. I will share the gospel with others. Anywhere I find myself, I will share the truth of the word. In the name of Jesus, I'm a proclaimer of the truth. I will never be silent. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Focus on the Lord and pray now. That the Lord will make a witness out of you. I want to ask the Holy Ghost, make a witness out of me. I want to ask the Holy Ghost, make a witness out of me. Make a witness out of me. Help me to witness about Jesus everywhere I go. Help me to be bold. Help me to be courageous. Courageous to talk about Jesus, to share my faith, to share my faith. Sabade, sabala barabazo brigo do brigadi alabade de asakatobusha. Wherever you are tonight, if you have not known Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, don't wait another day. Don't wait another day. Open your heart to him right now. Wherever you are and you have not said yes to Jesus, the Bible says there is no salvation in any other name but Jesus. Will you say this prayer with me wherever you are that you are not born again? You want to be saved today. Say with me, oh Lord God, I come to you tonight. I believe in Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that he died for me and that God raised him from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord of my life. I receive eternal life. I declare I have dominion over sin, over Satan, and over sickness from this day. I declare that I have eternal life in Jesus Christ's name. If you said that prayer, I pray for you today 
that God's hand rests on you mightily and that you walk in the truth consistently. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. I want you to declare, I am the salt of the earth. I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. I am the light of the world. In the name of Jesus, I will not be quiet. I will not be silent. In the name of Jesus, I will not lose my saltiness. I will not go under a bushel. I will not go under a bushel. I'm on a lampstand. I'm on the lampstand. I'm on the lampstand. My light cannot be hidden. I am on the lampstand. My light cannot be hidden. I am on the lampstand. My light cannot be hidden. I'm on the lampstand. My light cannot be hidden. In the name of Jesus, I am the light of the world. A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. I cannot be hid. I cannot be hid. I cannot be hid. I light my generation. I sought my generation i light my generation come on i sought my generation i bring light to my generation because i am the light of the world i bring salt to my generation because i'm the salt of the earth i bring the light i bring the salt i bring the light i bring the salt i am not confused i know who i am i have eternal life come on i have eternal life i am not confused the life of god is at work in me i'm not distracted i'm focused on jesus in the name of jesus thank you father just lift your hands and bless him right now mago brigade safragado so bragadili bragato raza fragado bo shebele kadoza rabazo koto bredi la brabadia mandele bedo brabaza blagadili akwateza thank you father we give you thanks and we give you praise today bless this your name lord thank you father we want to give. If you're giving online, there's a link where you can do your giving. Father, we thank you for the privilege to give. We magnify and we exalt you today because your word is at work in our lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for increasing us, for multiplying us, and for causing your blessing to materialize in every area of our lives. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, mighty Holy Ghost. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen and amen. It's our communion service this Sunday. This Sunday, and it's only one service. Remember to invite somebody. Share the gospel. Do something practical. There are cards there. Pick them on your way out and share your faith with somebody. Before you get home today, give somebody a card and invite. And say, you are invited. Smile and give them an invite. Don't frown and give them an invite smile even if they are not smiling back do you know the easiest seed to sow is the seed of a smile almost always you get it back glory to God hallelujah so do that our fasting starts tomorrow let everybody remember that and it's three days and let's you know let's be active in our soul winning let's keep getting the word out don't be quiet say to your neighbor don't be quiet say to your ask your neighbor have you been blessed this past three days are you sure? Are you sure? If we give you a mic now, what are you going to share with us? Listen, remain blessed. Share your faith on your way home. Give some. Share your faith with somebody. Share your faith with somebody. Don't be quiet. You have learned this much. Don't be quiet about it. Don't be quiet about Jesus. We'll see you again on Sunday. Remain blessed. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll connect with you again on Sunday. Remain blessed. Bye.